Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 9th, 2022, Corona 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including a storm alert for portions of the East Pacific Basin, new tropical cyclones potentially forming in the Atlantic, and what to expect over the next couple of weeks. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that we have a couple of things occurring today. First of all, in the Atlantic Basin, we have an area of disturbance tagged as Invest Area 97L. This area of shower and thunderstorm activity currently is pretty disorganized and does have some chance of developing over the next five days as it drifts towards the west-northwest here. But this is not going to impact any of the island chain, at least at this moment in time. And then now focusing on the East Pacific Basin, we do have Hurricane Howard. This is a hurricane in the East Pacific Basin, a Category 1 hurricane. We noticed that it is encountering some pretty unfavorable conditions currently. There is some pretty dry, stable air uh, that is to the north right here. You can kind of see all these cumuliform clouds. So this means that there's cooler sea surface temperatures, less instability, and this hurricane will be moving right into that environment. And the Hurricane Center calls for additional weakening. Uh, but that is the only hurricane in the East Pacific Basin, the only tropical system really in the East uh, Atlantic or East Pacific, sorry. And we don't really have much else developing over the East Pacific over the next couple of days. So that is certainly some good news. In the Atlantic Basin, again, we are watching Invest Area 97L with a 30% chance of developing over the next five days. Again, generally speaking, this will be heading towards the Northwest here. And again, is not expected to significantly impact any of the island chain at all. This will probably be moving well away from there and is very unlikely to develop after it reaches the island chain or after it reaches really the end of this threshold. And that's kind of why development chances have actually been lower today because uh, there doesn't really seem to be as favorable conditions. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and talk about those right now. If you look at the GFS forecast here, this is the 60 run valid for 8 a.m. this morning. We noticed that there is a broad area of vorticity associated with the monsoon trough south of the Cabo Verde Islands. But other than that, there's no real congealed area of vorticity. Now, there does seem to be some type of disturbance that tries to spin up here within the next about four, uh, 54 to about 72 hours from now. There's kind of a very broad disturbance. Uh, that tries to spin up within that monsoon trough and then it immediately starts ejecting out of there and heads northwest towards the island chain at that particular point in time and there actually is a little bit of a vorticity signature that is there but it is very weak and if we actually look at the GFS ensembles here and we look at the upper level wind environment at this time we notice how it is generally going to be very unfavorable across the uh, subtropical Atlantic and north of the islands for sure. We have this big trough coming over the East um, Atlantic right now, uh, kind of in the eastern part of the United States, and that will be moving generally eastward. And then we have this ridge setting up over here, which is helping to reinforce this trough. And we have some upper level troughing over here across the central and east Atlantic which is causing some shear out of the west here. So as our storm tries to be moving towards the northwest, this is going to get sheared apart pretty substantially. And the upper level wind environment or the upper level uh, pattern isn't going to be that conducive. And if I actually look here at the relative humidity as well, we can see our little surface cyclone here potentially moving northwest into some pretty hostile dry air. So overall, it's, the conditions are going to be pretty hostile for especially any significant development after that. And if we actually look at what the GFS ensembles are saying, if we look at the ensemble mean sea level pressure at this time, there are a few members that still try to develop this, but again, pretty much after about uh, the next couple of days, about August 16th, it looks like that this thing will probably be dead and there will be nothing left to talk about. So we will have to kind of continue to monitor the trends, but other than that, no significant threats to the island chain at this particular point in time. So now looking at what to expect for the remainder of the season, it's kind of been a pretty quiet start to the season so far after we saw Bonnie and Alex, of course. Well, this is looking at the European Ensemble, the 200 millibar velocity potential anomaly. This goes out to about the 21st of September, so past our peak of the hurricane season. 
We notice that again, right now we're kind of sitting in this pattern where there is a little bit of general unfavorability across the Atlantic Basin. We still have a little bit of favorable conditions out across the East Pacific, and that still looks to probably be the case. We notice kind of these little patches of uh, greens in here. This indicates upward moving air over the East Pacific Basin. And what this might uh, contribute to is a couple of more storms being pumped out uh, over the next couple of weeks into the next month or so across that basin. But overall, we have pretty large scale upward moving air across the tropical Atlantic, uh, including Africa and the Indian Ocean that should support uh, additional tropical cyclone formation and the potential for a very busy backloaded season. Uh, so September into October could be very busy. Uh, certainly, we're still expecting like 15 more named storms and certainly eight hurricanes and, you know, three to six majors. So it could still be a very, very busy season. If you look at the ensemble mean civil pressure coming off the European uh, forecast here, this is the zero Z run. Now, again, we'll kind of run this uh, forward in time. And what we kind of notice here is generally speaking, there actually isn't much that tries to develop. Now, about to 228 hours, this is by about the 18th of August, there looks to be maybe a very northward tropical wave that comes off here. Um, this is probably a result of the northward uh, wave bias that the European uh, forecast has. It tries to bring tropical waves off at a ridiculously high latitude. So the overall signal is that there could be a tropical wave emerging by about August 18th where some development may be possible. If we look at the upper level wind environment at this time, pretty good favorable conditions across the eastern part of the Atlantic and pretty unanimous easterly uh, kind of from east to west winds across most of the tropical Atlantic. So things should be good there. The upper level pattern for moisture will be quite substantial as well. And then once we head into about August 20th and beyond, it looks like the, the tropical main development region will certainly begin to warm up. And the 500 millibar height anomalies here seem actually jumping down to the lower uh, ensemble pressure here. We actually notice that again, a lot of that ridging across the North Atlantic starts to go away and we have generally lower than normal pressures across most of the main development region and the Canary Current. That is certainly very good for additional tropical cyclone formation, lessening that wave breaking pattern and allowing that dry air to stop flowing so readily into the tropical main development region. So it looks like things are starting to pick up and it, things like, it seems like that over the next couple of weeks, the switch is beginning to flip. And I do believe once we get to about August 20th and beyond, we are in for what could be a very, very busy season. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.